Howdy. It's Herb and uh, sorry I haven't have put on a video in the last couple of weeks but uh, I've been overhauling this uh, uh, rotary table indexer and uh, control box. I completely rebuilt it. New controller and uh, worked a bit on the software. But this is it. Uh, the controller, everything's inside. It's got an external 24 volt supply that supplies the uh, power to the uh, stepper. And uh, you can see the, the stepper there. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm uh, setting up to do the camshaft. And uh, we're pretty well there. Uh, why I wanted to use the, uh, the controller is that I can set it up where I move this one degree exactly. And then I adjust the uh, the uh, knee uh, the required amount of uh, movement uh, from uh, from its zero point and that way I can mill the lobes on these uh, uh, two gear blanks here uh, actually there's two lobes on one rod and it's uh, attached to the uh, uh, rotary table with a little three-jaw chuck. Uh, I've got a half-inch uh, flat-bottom email, email, <laughs> end mill, uh, and uh, so we've got it all set to go here. And uh, I'll take a few cuts, and uh, and I'll bring you back. First of all, what I want to do is if there's no uh, uh, reflection on that, I want to set it for the gear mode. Then I want to tell it the number of divisions. In this case, since I'm going to be stepping one degree increments, it's 360 degrees, and it's ready to ready to go for the first position. And each time I press the uh, star button, it'll increment one degree. So it's ready for me to cut. Okay, what I've got here, that way you can see it. Uh, it's a chart. Starts at 295 degrees and increments up. And it tells how far I need to lift uh, the uh, cutter and or drop the table. So first of all, uh, the first three increments, I just uh, go straight across. I've got it zeroed down here on the on the flat. And that's zero position. So uh, here we go. We're ready to go. to show how I trim uh, the head on my mill. Uh, this typical bridge port has four bolts in the front. You loosen those. Then the adjustment bolt is back here. You can see that back, back in that area. Uh, and before I've been using the indicator and running it up and down the table and so forth, but uh, uh, someone on YouTube or the machine, uh, North Texas Machinist Group 
uh, showed me uh, how to use a disc, uh, brake disc to do it. So let me pan down here. So we have this brake disc. Well, I have this charged uh, coaxial uh, dial indicator and uh, the brake disc and I oil around where the uh, uh, feeler uh, goes. Uh, I didn't have in the kit, you don't have a, a real big choice of feelers. I've got uh, one like that is longer, but it wasn't long enough. This is a 12 inch diameter disc, and I'm probably doing uh, 10 inch uh, diameter there. So. Uh, so I had to make another one. I took 3 16 inch rod, uh, sanded a ball on the, uh, the end of it, and uh, polished that. And then uh, I sanded a flat so this little set screw here would uh, uh, have a place to uh, grab the uh, feeler. And I've screwed in the uh, anti-rotational uh, thing and I'll, uh, I'll show you. That's probably moving about two tenths maybe over 10 inches which is I think is excellent and as you can see uh, it just travels through the oil and that way it's not uh, not uh, scraping up my uh, uh, disc uh, brake. These things are, are milled or uh, turned and ground where they're uh, uh, perfectly flat from front to back and so uh, you can pretty well be assured that this thing is trimmed in both directions within two or three tenths and that's just a matter of uh, 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 doing the bolts until you get what what you want and just running the, the mill on real slow speed here. So. Uh, that's uh, that's how I've trimmed my mill. Now all I need to do is tighten up the uh, bolts and check it again.